doing. Then of course, one of the bigger problems is how to integrate it with one of your BMSs. And this, you know, might be dip more difficult. Uh, and a lot of BMSs, like I've got a $60 smart BMS and it floats the wire. Uh, floats the BMS signal if it wants to shut off. So um, there's there's some challenge to, to figure out how to integrate these things. Most often a BMS can't just hook to this remote battery switch. You're going to have to come up with a relay or some situation that um, you figure out that you know interfaces to this relay and we're going to cover that too in this series so stand by and uh, I request your patience a little bit it's kind of a complex subject this is probably the most frustrating part to get these pulsing to work so we have ourselves a BMS here where we're monitoring the pack the um, cell level of, of our pack and um, We've got um, a situation where we've got an inverter maybe and we're, the BMS is controlling the ver inverter, shutting that off. Maybe it's shutting off the charger. Maybe it's shutting off, um, say, like a battery protect. Maybe it's got, we've, we've got a battery protect here on the DC loads. Um, but we want to have one other layer of protection possibly and um, we'd like to use this relay to be our master battery shut off so um, that's what we're going to have to do and we can there's a few different strategies we can use depending on our BMS signals but we have these relay modules that trigger on high trigger on low and um, they burn up maybe um, they burn up like 0.2 milliamp 0.2 milliamps if they're just sitting idle and there might be about 70 milliamps or something like that if we if we have to actuate the relay one of these relays on there so these things are pretty good mo are pretty good you can get them in 5 volts or 12 volts and they're pretty good modules um, right now the, the MOSFETs are pretty good this is a 15 amp MOSFET um, and you can um, it's got input it's got input and uh, output right here and you can drive um, you can drive using these connectors you can drive to the relay and then of course you can either um, have some sort of um, this will actually take some PWM input or some other um, switching input um, th so that's that's an option that you can drive that of course it, you're not going to probably have much luck driving um, this re this relay with your BMS because <clears throat> this thing is going to draw a lot of current and it will burn out um, it will probably burn out most um, most devices so you're going to have to run an intermediate relay probably so the thing that I think is probably works pretty well is if you have a microprocessor, this thing is very flexible. It can adapt to your BMS signals, whatever you have. You have low, you know, sometimes you have low, sometimes you'll have floating, sometimes you'll have high. And this thing can, can adapt. And I'll show you a little snippet of code that I used. Um, for this microprocessor. So in my example, I'm using both of these. This is for my relay and this actually um, takes the BMS input. So here's an example of a breadboard setup I have where I have the yellow wire hooking to this blue LED and um, I have the, um, the switch set to the auto mode now for the heck of it. I'll just switch it to the manual mode and I switched it back to auto and I'm going to turn it on now and you can see that uh, the LED indicates the state that the relay is now closed so I'm driving the relay 
with this MOSFET module that I showed you before, a 15 amp MOSFET module. And that module has PWM input to it um, with this uh, microprocessor. So I'm just going to show a brief example of what can be done to, um, you know, if we were going to have a master shutoff situation. I'm going to create a situation here, which is a low voltage disconnect. Um, I have a voltage divider here where I'm going to turn down the voltage and uh, let's see if we can get the whole thing here. Okay it shut off. So it was a little slow to shut off because I'm averaging the voltage. Now I'll recover the voltage and we'll do another test. So in this test I'm going to simulate a situation where the BMS is going to float the signal. So I've, I've re-enabled the, I've closed the relay and I'm going to simulate a situation where um, the electrodocus in this case, BMS, is, uh, is going to float the, um, s uh, a signal. So I'm feeding in um, uh, the, um, a, a ground signal. I'm using a pull-up resistor uh, internal to the software in this microprocessor. And I'm just going to float, simulate the floating of a signal. To, um, from the BMS. So I'm just going to pull this pin from ground right now and uh, it fired and no blue light there. Now let's simulate a over voltage simulation. So I've, I've uh, closed the relay. The blue light is on and let's go over here and see if we can't dial in some higher voltage here. Um, so what I'm going to do is go over here. I'm going to have to crank it up on the on my bench power supply here. I'm cranking it Okay, so it shut off at about, I think I had it programmed for somewhere around 15 volts and it shut off about there. So it, that's a success. Um, we were just reviewing the yellow wires and the orange wire and then we've already covered, you know, the power wire there. Um, so uh, there's a pretty the instruction books over on the blue sea site and you can read through it uh, there they sell it with a switch which isn't applicable to us because we're using kind of an automated BMS so um, you know this is the kind of BMS that I have here um, it's the the uh, smart BMS which um, will have signals that interface with the, uh, it'll actually float a signal. Um, this BMS will float a signal. And uh, that is similar to what the Electrodocus um, manual is going to do. Um, they, uh, this Electrodocus um, outputs a signal that, um, can float. He's got a relay there in that in that system and I'm going to use that uh, relay on the BMS. I'm going to briefly give you my impression about modules. So you can either buy these chips individually or buy modules that have everything integrated. And you see they have resistors and some smart people have put these things together. And, and put connectors on them that if you've got them in an RV or a boat that you know you're gonna have a little bit better cho uh, chance of you know these things surviving vibration. Uh, we also have um, 
here's an example where I've got a 5 volt a like a uh, 24 or can run 24 or 12 or whatever voltage you want to 5 volts and I can power my project with this this of course is a board that um, I've written the code to do um, made a smart um, basically made a smart relay out of this uh, with not very many lines of code uh, but um, the, this microprocessor board is modular and they make them very cheaply and everything's all together and you can add features and functionality these are the IO pins for for this for this module and there's even modules if you want to really have accurate voltage you can buy these um, these ADC uh, analog to digital conversion modules they're very precise 16 bits of resolution where you can read voltages with a microprocessor and um, we even get down to this module isn't very uh, complicated but it's um, what's called a voltage divider and um, inputs a high voltage and uh, and then outputs a relatively lower voltage so the micro so you don't blow up your microprocessor so what you get with these uh, modules is some sort of reliability uh, between modules so you're not going to blow up um, you know independent um, electronics so I'm a big fan of probably using a module when you can and I paint these things with um, for the boat a lot of times I end up painting with this krill, clear nail acrylic so I just paint these things with the nail acrylic and put them into project boxes and we'll and see how that works anyway um, there are many ways to do this integration and I'll probably just keep um, updating you as I go along uh, here's an example of the microprocessor I use microprocessor I used a uh, nano an Arduino nano and here's um, the MOSFET I used um, which is a it's got a 15 amp rating I believe and uh, here's the here's the uh, kind of pinout where the Arduino hooks up here you could actually I believe actuate this with a switch also and um, here's an example of re relay modules that you could use are very inexpensive and you can get them in all kinds of voltages here and a lot of them have um, the thing you might want to look for is high and low level triggers the best thing for me to do would be look at um, a small section of code uh, where you can um, just output to um, through pins and you can uh, write to pins and that will cause the relay to close um, I'm uh, s sorry relay to open is what we were doing and here's a much longer example of code that I used where I was um, using a um, a ADC which um, reads more accurate voltage and um, I'm also monitoring the pack voltage and I'm monitoring the LED status and I'm um, triggering based on that I'm also um, looking at uh, the, the um, pack voltage um, high and low um, high and low voltage disconnects and also the LED outputs and um, I'm also monitoring the BMS whether it's floating or not so this is just some code that I have I'll probably do another video soon on that and uh, I wish you good luck with your project